okay everyone welcome back to another video on the channel today we're back on gt sport and we're back with a daily race driving at brands hatch in the gt3 porsche 911 rsr it's a group 3 car and we're we're assigned from pole position in this um, daily race c race um, it's 14 laps and we're gonna start the race and we're gonna go straight to the tv replay cameras for the start of the action as everyone's all close together so you can see there we're all weaving around ready to start this race and we've got a very fast driver behind us in P2. I think his qualifying time was 1 minute 22.6. Um, we had a race before this. Um, he, put, he was putting us under a lot of pressure. We were in P2. We had another car in front of us. And I made a mistake just before the pit stop phase, which was really frustrating because I'd saved a lot of fuel. But you can see there straight away, everyone seems to have got through the first corner okay. But the hairpin's the corner that normally causes some trouble at Brown's Hatch. But so far, looking back there, it looks fairly okay. Um, can't see much going on there. And you can see I've built up a little bit of a cushion straight away to P2. What I wanted to do right from the start was try and build myself a little bit of a gap just so he couldn't be in my slipstream to save that much fuel. I wanted to try and get the gap to near as it could to one second just to stop him being able to you know, use my slipstream to save as much fuel as possible. So you can see there, trying to break the slipstream, went over to the right hand side and then back over to the left hand side of the track for the normal racing line. So pushing hard through these corners, you can see there, right on the limits, going onto the dust, um, really got an aggressive, you can see how aggressive I was on this um, opening lap of the race, trying to build some sort of a gap just to give myself that cushion so that then once I've got the one second lead, I can start doing my own fuel saving in this Porsche. Um, one thing I will say about this Porsche is it definitely seems more effective now at doing the um, fuel saving by short shifting than it did last time I tried this car. It's been a long time since I actually done a race at Browns actually in this car or pretty much any track really. Um, I've mainly been using like other cars like the Ferrari and that from the manufacturers but you can see there we're in P1 and we've got that gap over a second so you're going to see now um, the short shifting I'm talking about um, to save the fuel out. I'm not going to bother doing the fuel mixture way on the right. I think it's actually more effective now on this game to pretty much concentrate your fuel saving on short shifting in mixture one because you've still got the power up to the, the full power up to mid rate, midway on the rev range, etc. So you're not going to lose massive amounts of time, but you still save a reasonable fuel. So you'll see what I'm doing is save. I'm not going to rev over rev the car sometimes. On some um, some parts of the track, I will rev quite hard, but if I feel like I can get away with short shift then I will do it you can see there I'm not going to rev too hard on um, from second to third gear when we came out of that corner because um, I want to get in the track I want the traction so you can see he's reasonably close still he's 1.1 seconds behind and we need to start doing some short shifting and uh, trying to build that fuel up but it was a hard one this because I had to try and maintain speed while saving fuel so you're going to see a bit of a mixture of strategies in my first thing here now where I'm trying to save the fuel and I'm trying to obviously push really reasonably hard as you can see you can visually see the gap in that um, middle camera middle camera on the left hand side um, you can see that he's quite a distance behind already we've got our gap to 1.3 1.4 seconds there as I'm really trying to push hard he, maybe he was doing some fuel saving or whether he struggled to get in the rhythm at the start of this race um, I'm not too sure so once I saw that gap building I, I pretty much decided I need now to really concentrate on some sort of fuel saving so we're going to try and do some short shifting and get ourselves some sort of an advantage when it comes to the pit stop phase you know this Porsche really does like to be revved really hard so if you just change it as soon as the blue dial hits the end you're going to save fuel over revving it that little bit more because you know if you rev this car really hard it does gain a little bit of acceleration but I think it's actually more effective just to change the gear and take advantage of the um, saving in the fuel so now we're obviously working way up this long straight and he's now he's, he's holding it around 1.2 seconds that gap so you can see i'm doing the short shifting from fourth to fifth there midway on the um, rev range trying to now sort of like try and get that fuel um, to a position where it's going to give me an advantage in the pit stop phase not going into third gear on that previous corner also i just stayed in fourth gear trying to save the, f the fuel through that through doing it like that rather than going down to third gear and let the revs build up too much um, so all different ways you can do it every lap was pretty much different i was just trying to pick and choose when to save the fuel some corners i would drive reasonably aggressive on other corners i wouldn't be so aggressive on you can see there we're starting to build a gap now between p3 and 4 um, we, we definitely had a bit of a pace advantage over the other, other cars in this race, um, myself and P2. Um, this the Spanish driver really, really fast, the guy behind me um, really did push me in the other race before this and then I made a slight error which was really frustrating because that race would have been another really good race because we had um, a guy in front of us that we were pushing really hard as well. So we're going to jump on board now with P3 
as we're P2, sorry, as we're still trying to do some fuel saving and obviously pushing reasonably hard as well. You can see his pace is pretty much identical to ourselves. You can see um, I'm trying to follow the lines, obviously taking advantage of much speed as I can while obviously doing some fuel saving. Um, I do like watching again from these views where you can see yourself in front and you can watch the way you're driving, etc. I do enjoy it and you can see how we were maintaining that visual gap just to around one second. I think it's like one second, 1 1.1, 1 1.2 seconds. Um, that was what I wanted to try and keep the gap at um, whilst they're saving fuel because if I, if he gets under a second, he can then obviously drive his car really hard and he would get really close to myself and he's going to then save fuel in our slipstream. So this was the strategy I had to pretty much go on was kind of mixture of aggressive and fuel saving. and. Um, just try and save as much fuel as I can while maintaining reasonable lap times. I think most of my laps in this open stint, just to compare um, to when we drove the Ferrari in the FIA race where we were struggling to hit 23s, uh, we could have hit 23s, but um, it would wear the tyres out. In this race, every one of my, I think my opening five or six, five, I think my first five laps after the obviously the first lap from this, the air rolling start was all one minute 23s from 23.6 to 23.8 so it really does show you the difference with the uh, Porsche to the Ferrari where the Porsche is just so much better on its tyres it didn't even feel like the tyres were even wearing out coming into the pits really they felt fine so obviously losing a bit of grip and a bit of traction but overall I felt like you could still push them so that's where a lot of other cars are gaining over the Ferrari and I think they need to make some maybe adjustments to that Ferrari in terms of its tyre work because it's already a tricky enough car as you can see there P2 had a little bit of moment he's lost a little bit of time that he started to gain a bit on me but he's lost a bit of time he's just got himself pretty much very close to being out of that slip team. you can see there on the lap times a 23.6 uh, an 8 so 23.9 and another 23.9 so you can see the consistency and we're obviously doing fuel saving as well as well as we was with that Ferrari so it's interesting to see the advantage the, the Porsche has in race conditions because it clearly has an advantage uh, much safer to push hard a lot easier to push hard and this is why I think they need to make some adjustments to that Ferrari in terms of its um, tyre wear because the car's very hard to drive as it is so to add even you know more tire wear to, than the other cars or make it even trickier to drive maybe they should make the tire wear a bit better on that car just so it's a little bit easier to drive and also it might might get a lot a few more people using the car because um, it's a very tricky car obviously as we go over the line on a 23.6 pretty much matching the fastest lap of the race set by p2 who's right behind us so the race pace has been really good like i say you can see there 23.8 23.9 23.9 and a 23.6 and that's with doing fuel saving you know we're obviously still not over revving the car so the potential is there to hit low 23s if we were going you know 100 aggressive but i didn't really want to do that at this stage i wanted to just try and make sure i save fuel because i know the guy behind me could hit 20 low 23s as well so if i was going to drive really aggressive he was probably going to drive really aggressive as well but I wasn't sure on how much fuel he would be saving when he was behind me. I felt like I could save a little bit more fuel because I took note of, in the first race, I checked out the fuelage um, when everyone went in the pits. I checked out everyone's fuel, what they had used, and I noticed that myself and the guy who was in front of me had saved the most and a bit more than the guy who's now behind me in this race. So I kind of realized that I'd probably be able to, you know, especially with him, if he was behind me in the slipstream and I'd still managed to save more than him in the previous race, I thought I could do the same in this race. So that's one thing to always do. Pay, pay attention to other races you've been in where, you know, at the pit stop phase, even if you're not pitting on that lap, I always check out the, the other people's um, pit stop percentage left on the fuel purely for the next time you're in a race with them just so you know um, how they tend to run their race and you can then kind of figure out whether you need to save fuel etc if you feel you have an advantage in terms of that fuel consumption it's always little things you need to pay attention to and I did it in the first race and it kind of um, paid, it pays off for this race as you can see there he's getting really close now you can see on that TV replay camera I do like that replay camera where it hovers around my head and um, he's definitely got a visual um, you can see how visually much closer he is now as we go through that really nice camera angle as both cars come flying through there and he's, re he's pretty much within five six tenths of my car by the looks of it now and we're just trying to push really hard and see if we can hold him off in this race you know I, I felt pretty confident about hold the car because I know I've got more pace and I know this track is one of the hardest tracks you will come across on pretty much any track really because to actually get an overtake made if the driver in front doesn't make a mistake it's very hard track to, to pass because you can just go defensive on the inside and stuff and 
make it pretty much impossible to get past. As you can see there, he's really putting a lot of pressure on now. He's right behind us, and he's really, he's, you know, fractions behind me. We're coming in very close to the pit stop phase soon. As you can see, he's really pushing a lot harder than myself. I was trying to keep the car within its limits, and I was actually doing a bit more fuel saving in these um, last few laps to try and make sure when I get to the pit stop phase, I'm maybe I would have an advantage over him. So you can see there, um, he with that little bit of pushing he did, he actually lost a fraction of time there going before the straight, and he's not really close enough to make any sort of move as we go through turn one. Both of us taking a little bit different lines there. I actually didn't hit as nice of an apex as he did. I missed the apex slightly, however, it didn't really um, affect me too badly. As you can see now, going through sector one, and again, he's very close here. You can visually see how close he is. Let's go on board with P2 now, as you can see the difference in how, how close this race is still coming into the pit stop phase you can see i think you've seen briefly p3 a little bit back i think he's about three four seconds behind ourselves so um in terms of the top two it looks like myself and this guy in p2 have got a clear pace advantage over um, the other cars behind us which is good because it, it means we can just run our own strategies and our own race however i wanted to go to um lap eight before i pit it because if i pit on lap seven and i get come out the pits behind one of the other cars that had not got the pace and they're obviously doing maybe going to lap eight or something like that or doing you know a longer first thing you could end up losing a lot of time so i do prefer to do that um a little bit extra when you're in p1 just to try and give yourself um, a clear pit and exit when you come out of the pits so you don't get caught up behind anyone because in a previous race i came out of the pits and some guy who hadn't pit a jet decided to block me and ended up um, brake checking me and pushing me off the track and i got a little bit frustrated so you can see they're going in the pits i actually turned in too early and got a time penalty it was only like i think like a three tenths of a second penalty but you can see there straight away we've actually managed to save 10 percent more fuel than p2 so that's a, a, a lot of fuel you know that's nearly a four laps worth of fuel so that's going to be really handy so i decided to put that little bit of extra fuel in just to make sure that you know I can um, give myself a little bit in the last few laps to drive aggressively as obviously that diamond is working your fuel out for what you've used in the first eight laps so we've come out the pits and we're just around three seconds ahead of p2 which is great and um, we gain quite a bit on him there it looks like i think he might have put a little bit extra in, in fuel obviously because he's he's gonna have to use more because obviously his fuel is going to be based on how he was driving and that means he can go aggressively to the end however I can't so what I now have to do is try and save my fuel on these opening few laps out of coming from, out of coming out of the pits so that at the end of the race I'm going to have fuel to save and you know if I need to go defensive and if I need to use the full power on the straights I need to be able to save it for that point and um, so it's a real tactical race so far different strategies you can see I've got the advantage at the moment but now he's going to have the advantage of being able to put faster laps in you can even see like now um, look at lap six and seven still in low 24s um, it shows you the difference between this and the Ferrari you know, in terms of when the tyre wear kicks in this is still able to maintain good lap times what we're going to do obviously now is we're just going to stay on board as well with ourselves with the um, view from the driver in P2 the Spanish driver in P2 in that top right hand corner and um, there's no real need to have the replay camera obviously because we've got a bit of a gap so we're just going to concentrate on these two cameras now and watch this race as you can visually see um, the different strategies taking effect so he's gained three attempts on the outlap so he's obviously pushing really hard you can visually see it if you watch his screen in that top right hand corner you can see how close he's getting to the edge of the track he's using a lot of the track he's obviously got that mixture obviously on one like i have but he's obviously revving the car a lot harder than what i am and really pushing his, his car to the limits whereas i'm at this stage trying to do a bit of short shifting not over revving the car trying to make sure that I've got enough fuel because I, I know that I've got a 2.5 second lead. And I know I've only got four, five laps, five laps to, um, you know, to get to the end of this race. So I'm trying to just save the fuel by just eking out the car very slowly on the straights and just trying to make sure that I don't lose um, too much of, um, time difference to each lap. And you know, I'm trying to keep the the deltas very. Um, I was really concentrating on that um, top left hand corner where it shows you the difference to the driver behind. So you'll see me where like I'm revving the car a bit harder sometimes, um, maybe doing some fuel saving sometimes. It's, it was a really like mixture of strategies race where I had to kind of push, but I had to be very cautious on the fuel because if you have a little look on the um, the laps remaining, we've obviously got coming up to the start of um, lap 11, so lap 11, 12, 13, 14, four laps remaining. But um, when we go over the line, and the delta's on like 4.4, so we're okay for fuel at this moment. Um, but if I start driving really aggressively by revving this car, I 
found out on the previous race, it just instantly starts there. The, the, the fuel remaining goes down really fast. So that's why you've got to be very cautious with this car. It uses a lot of fuel if you rev the car really hard. However, if you're fairly cautious and rev the, the car to, you know, the rev bar, rev change, changing gear when it revs to the end of the bar or just before then, it's actually fairly okay on the fuel of this car. Much better than what it used to be from, from experience when I, when I first had the game. I found that the car was quite aggressive on the fuel. But now you can see there, he's only 1.5 seconds behind us. He's actually caught up a, a real large amount. It looks like he really put a good lap in on lap 10. I didn't hit the best lap you can see there. A 24.4, not a very good lap at all. Obviously trying to do that fuel saving and um, on the first two laps to counter it for the, the last few laps. And you know, I need to make sure that on these last few laps I've got the fuel. So I was doing more of my fuel saving on the first few laps out of the pits. So then I can start pushing a little bit harder on these laps. So be interesting to see what the lap time is when we go over the lap um, the line this time. See if we are a little bit better. You can see we're two tenths off of our best lap. So it should be close to a 23 again. And you can see he's not gaining as much now. It's still 1.4 seconds. So you can see when I saw the gaps um, getting closer, I decided to push a little bit harder. It was a, re a real tactical race. As you can see on it on the top right hand corner, he's got me in his sights now. He, he can probably smell that he's got a chance of winning this race now and that he's going to be pushing 100%. You can visually see how much of the track he uses. He, he's all the way to the left on the um, outside of the track. He's hitting his apexes and he's really getting on the power early when you're watching his view. You can see he's using every little bit of track on the outside. You can see there, he's all the way over the curb. We're trying to stay within, you know, not push too hard that I make a mistake, but push hard enough so he can't gain too much. You can see there, lap 11, back into the 1 minute 23s, where I'm starting to drive a little bit harder now. You know, I can see that I've got the fuel kind of under control. You know, we've got two, maybe two laps and, and a two thirds to go, and we're just under three laps left. So we're okay on fuel, so I can start pushing a little bit hard now and just letting this car rev a little bit more freely and start trying to push a little bit more. So. It's, it was really hard to do this though because you, I couldn't rev 100% because I would have run out of fuel. If I was to rev this car like a qualifying lap, I would run out of fuel before the end. So it, it was really, um, had to have a lot of willpower to control how much, you know, how much I was going to give this car at this point. You can see there the gap getting dangerously close to him getting in the slipstream and we've still got two laps to go after finishing this lap. So it is really, it's getting really quite nervous at this point. I was, I have to say, it's a hot day here in the UK today and I was absolutely sweating at this point. I was starting to get really panicky. It might not look like it on the driving but I was genuinely getting a little bit panic, like panicky during this phase of the race as he's starting to gain on me. And this is why another reason why I love GT Sport. You know, you're going on. I was like, I think it was about 11 o'clock in the morning. As you can see there, back marker makes an error, and we've got competition like this in the race. It's, it's, you just don't go into races, and it's very rare you'll go into a race and win by like 10 seconds or so. It's pretty much every race you go in, you've got competition to race, and that's why so many people like driving GT Sport because. The competitions there as you can see there we've got another back marker it looks like they may have had an incident on the corner so now i can see that back marker i decide to try and gain some slip through from him it looks like he's going to try and get rid of his penalty but he's ghosted so i just use that little bit to get a bit of slip through off, off him and you can see it actually helped me out i actually got the gap to 1.3 seconds by doing that and we go through on our um, personal best um, sector through that section so that's really good to see so at that point when i seen that i felt a little bit more comfortable now because i can start um pushing that little bit harder I know that I can control this gap to the guy behind a little bit easier than obviously when we were doing the fuel save and you can see me now revving the car a lot more freely and you can see that I'm trying to push as hard as I can with the fuel that I've got left there it's you know I, I can visually see we've got one lap to go now final lap and you're going to see how close the fuel is you know as we're coming up to line it's going to be pretty much dead on one lap of fuel and um, we've got him one second behind us and we've got to get rid of that um, penalty which obviously I'll try and get rid of at the finishing line but if he gets you know within half a second of me he's gonna probably be able to beat me when I break before the line so this was quite nervous for me at this point I I was trying to push as hard as I can with the fuel I've got so you know that that fuel on the bottom there saying one lap that's based on fuel saving laps so now I've got to see if I can do a really good lap with driving reasonably hard so what I'm now doing is pretty much revving it to the end of you see where the blue line is um, coming up at the end of the rev range I'm revving it to that I'm not over revving it I'm just revving it pretty much to like say 95% of what the revs it can do and you can see we've actually built up a little bit more of a lead on this lap so this is going really well so far this is looks like it's going to be a personal best lap unfortunately you can see there another tenth above our previous best lap 
Um, it was looking like it was going to be a 23.4 or something like that, but obviously I've got a break before the finishing line. I could have just gone over, but um, it would be risky. I just wanted to just break before because I know that you only lose it probably half a second at most if you do it that way. So you can see again through this sector split, we're up again. We're approaching two temps up, and I really hit that corner nicely there and got on the power reasonably well. And you can see he's 1.1 seconds behind coming into the final corner now and he's, he's looks like we're going to be able to do this but look how close we are on fuel 0.2 laps of fuel left 0.1 as it's going to change now and we pretty much judged that fuel to perfection and we got rid of the penalty and just about take the win so seven temps ahead and that was a really intense race i have to say to be involved with that that was more intense than sometimes battling away with um, a group of cars when you've got a really fast driver chasing you down and he's able to use more fuel than you it does get really intense and then um, I did enjoy that and that was a great race, I thoroughly enjoyed that and it, it was great to be pushed that hard in this race at that time of the day. Um, so another brilliant race on GT Sport, I really enjoyed that, I hope you guys enjoyed it, it was really nervous for myself, um, hopefully we'll have more races like that to come soon. And I'm going to try and get on and do the Nürburgring sprint race in the GR4 class of car later tonight, hopefully. Um, I might do a few more in this car as well, so you might see me on tonight um, to try and build my DR up a bit. As I'm quite strong at Browns Hatch, so hopefully I can get my DR a little bit higher again. We're pretty much on 64,000, 65,000, something like that now. So it's going back up and I want to get it to that 70,000 plus um just to make sure I'm, I'm right up there for these um top tier races anyway guys thanks again for watching um i do appreciate everyone that gives these videos a thumbs up it means a lot to me and it gives me more motivation i've been seeing so many um comments uh, about my videos and it really does make me happy and the amount of po positive feedback and um thumbs up has been amazing so thanks again to everyone that does that it means a lot and um, so make sure if you haven't already subbed to the channel make sure you do click that sub subscription button and click the notification button so you don't miss any future videos i am uploading in at least one video a day today has been two videos i'm trying to keep it at least one video a day um for the foreseeable future obviously we're going to obviously try and mix in some other games in the future as well but gt sport is a priority and that's going to probably be a, a game that we're going to be doing an upload on every single day so thanks again for watching and we'll be back very soon